Hey there, do you dream of escaping into a book? Maybe your escape includes a cozy cabin in the mountains or a magical town along the coast. Either way, you're in the right place. Welcome to Literary Escapes with me, Becky. This year on the podcast, we're exploring the United States. So every week I'm going to bring you a new book set in a different state. So let's see where we're going today. So welcome back to the Literary Escapes podcast. I am Becky, and today we continue on our journey through the United States, and I have author Brittany Joy with me, and we are talking about Minnesota today. Yay! Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to have you here, and thank you for joining us on this trip across the United States this year. Oh, I'm I'm excited, and I'm excited to um, be a part for... Minnesota, because Minnesota is uh, my home state. I was wondering about that because you don't live there now, right? No, I I live in Oregon. I am just outside of uh, Portland, Oregon. I've been here oh about fifteen years. Okay, um, and moved here to be with my my husband is originally from here. Probably a good idea to move there then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I thought I saw that you were in the Pacific Northwest, and so I was curious what your connection was with Minnesota. So you grew up there. Yeah, yes, I grew up there, and all my extended family is um, still in Minnesota, so I am often often back there. Nice, well. nice. So I, my only experience with Minnesota, which is extraordinarily minimal, is we got stranded in Minnesota. Oh, no. flying home from Montana one time. I'm in Florida. And okay. there was a hurricane going on in Florida. And so I kept calling the airlines and saying, obviously, the flight is going to cancel. We'd like to stay in Montana, we have a place to stay. Sure. They wouldn't tell us that it was canceled until we got to Minnesota. Oh. And then of course, it canceled. And so, so we got to stay in Minneapolis and we went to the mall, the big mall, the mall of America's, I think it is, right? Yes, the mall of America. And that is yep. my only experience with Minnesota, <laughs> which is pretty pathetic. So, so well, yeah, tell me more about is, Minnesota. Yeah, the mall is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> before I moved to Oregon, I did actually live not actually in a suburb of Minneapolis. So okay. it wasn't very far from the Mall of America, actually in the airport there. But I grew up in Southern Minnesota. Okay. Um, and then my, um, my brother, I have one sibling. My brother is actually in very Northern Minnesota now as an, as an adult. So um, I'm either visiting my parents in Southern Minnesota or my brother in Northern Minnesota or both <laughs> when I go home. And um, I picked that town at, for my sweet romance series. Um, it's called Maple Bay. And there are four books and a prequel novella in, in my series. And it's a small town romance series with cowboy heroes. Um, cause I have, uh, an equestrian background too. So I write horses and zoo. Yeah. So is Maple Bay, is that a real city or is it a fictitious one? It is a fictitious one. Um, I placed it in Northern Minnesota. It's, it's set like North of Bemidji, which is a real town. Okay. In, in okay. Um, but I wanted it to be in northern Minnesota in, in a pretty rural area. Um, the funny thing is actually all my books are set in spring or summertime. Um, there's one that's like early fall. So I haven't done a winter. <laughs> I have to do a Christmas book. That would be fun. Oh, I, I know. I do. And I love Christmas too. So th that's that hopefully will come down the that way. Would be fun, I haven't yeah. tackled a uh, cold Minnesota winter. Um, <laughs> <romance yet. laughs> Been a little while since you've done it, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it is because it's pretty mild here. Um, yeah. Yeah. So cowboys, I didn't know that Minnesota had cowboys, which might be just show my ignorance. I don't know. 
No, you know, I think for the most part, when we see like a romance, like a cowboy romance, it is usually based like Montana or Texas. Exactly. Yeah. And I, you know, growing up with horses and I still have, I still have horses now. I was actually right, right before I got on with you, I ran out to move my horses from one pasture to the other. <laughs> but um growing up with horses there's there's a big like horse community in Minnesota and also just a rural you know farming um community that maybe not everybody you know thinks of horses and cowboys when they think of Minnesota but that was my experience interesting okay yeah with huh. it and and I definitely like wrote about Minnesota because I started the first book um in 2020 um when the whole pandemic and everything was going on and so I was a little like homesick and whatnot yeah too. yeah so I incorporated a lot of stuff like traditions and cooking um and just like how my extended family is oh in. that's awesome okay yeah. how fun so you, your background is not it, well let me ask this I don't know this um is your background in writing? It is not. <laughs> and so how did you become an author? Um, well, I think like most people who end up writing, I love reading. I've always, yeah. been, a big, <laughs> I've always been a big reader ever since I was, since I was little, but I actually worked, um, I worked in sales in the corporate world um for the past 20 years or so okay and have always wanted to write and I actually had a transition a um from one job to another where I had a gap okay uh, about 10 years ago and I was taking a write an online writing course at the time and I thought well if if there was ever any time that I was going to try to write a book that That's you cool. know this would be the time I actually have, you know, the time during the day to, to, to do it. And yeah. so that's when I, I wrote my first book. And then ever since then, even when I went back, um, went back to work, I continued to write, just didn't have as much time to do it, but I, I make the time. Nice. And so was Maple, the Maple Bay series, was that your first books or do because I I do see that you have other series you've got a horse one and you've got a fantasy one yes so the horse my young adult contemporary which I call a quest like a young adult equestrian fiction, okay it is heavily um based on like a human horse connection nice as, well as a young adult romance um and so Red Rock Ranch is the name of that series. Okay. That, that was my first series. Um, and, and that one is also based in Minnesota? That one is actually based in Oregon. Oh, okay. How do, okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. So that one is fictionally based in central Oregon on um, a cattle, a cattle ranch. And um, my in-laws uh mm -hmm. my my father-in-law has a cattle ranch in eastern oh, cool. Oregon okay so um I always get lots of lots of ideas there too yeah no doubt <laughs> very cool and then your other one is fantasy right yes I I so the fantasy series was my second the second series I wrote so the first two were both young adults before I transitioned into writing um, more the sweet romance. With okay. Maple Bay. Um, but my young adult series has horses in it as well. Um, I love that. Okay. <laughs> so it has, can't get away from them. I know. I know. I can't. That's a good <laughs> thing though. Picture life without them, I guess. Um, but my fantasy series has a heroine that has a telepathic um, communicate she can telepathically communicate with animals ah. and um, there are a lot of horses as well because it's very it's, cool um, a medieval environment nice okay yeah. so the book that you are bringing to the table this week is 
starting over in Maple Bay. And that is our Minnesota book. So tell me about the book. Sure. So starting over in Maple Bay, um, if I were to kind of rattle off some of the tropes in the book, um, there's cowboy hero, there's nice. an inheritance um, mm. because the um, Hazel, who is the heroine, the book starts off with her. Um, she's gone through a divorce. She has a 10 year old daughter. They're living with her parents and um, she, Hazel was adopted and she never met her birth mom. And um, she gets a letter in the mail that she inherited a old historic carriage house um, from her mother. And so the first chapter is her heading off with her daughter in from the Minneapolis area to Mabel Bay. <laughs> the middle of nowhere. <laughs> middle of nowhere. In her yes. opinion, I'm sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes, and um, she goes to the reading of the will, and she also discovers uh, that she has a sister. That, that she had to have been a surprise. Yes, <laughs> and that that's how the first chapter ends too. So she just she meets her sister. She never knew. Um, there is cool. a clause in the will that says, in or in order for her, Hazel to inherit uh, the carriage house, she has to live on the property for the summer. Nice. That's yeah. fun. That's that's such yeah. a great premise for a story. I read that earlier and I'm like, I have got to read this. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking forward to reading it. So, and there are four in this series. Is that right? Yes, there are four books and a prequel novella. And so are one of the other stories about um, Hazel's sister? You know what? Going back, it there it is not because Hazel's sister is actually married. Um, okay, okay. She's married and she has three very rambunctious little boys that are fun characters in the. First, oh, that's fun. First book, yes. But I actually wish I had wrote her um, single because she is a really fun character, and I, I wish I had been able to expand. Her. Um, into her love story but I have thought about actually writing a short story or a novella about her and her husband um, yeah that would be a fun story I bet yeah, yeah very cool it's fun and so each 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 um Maple Bay book is a standalone romance and okay they each follow different characters from um either brothers sisters or cousins from okay family that the Weston family, who is um, that Jesse is the hero and the cowboy in the first Maple Bay book, and um, it's his family. It's his family. Okay, very cool, very nice. Yeah. And so, how many stories will there be in the end, or have you figured that out yet? Well, I for right now, I think I'm I am gonna leave it at four books. Okay, prequel, but I like we were chatting earlier, I have thought about a Christmas um, mm. book in this series as well. Um, but I am uh, working on an, ex it's not part of the Maple Bay series, but it is taking a side character from the last book. Nice. And, and taking her into another series. Oh, fun. I love yeah. it when authors do that. And just yeah. keep building the world and people that you know that you're comfortable with and familiar with and then expanding it. I think that's such a fun way to for authors to create new series. What a I agree. What a I love fun reading, thing. Reading in, you know, communities and families mm -hmm. and friend groups. And, and yeah, I I find that to be a lot of fun as well. So Minnesota and Maple Bay. What are some of your favorite things about like rural Minnesota? Well, my book, so growing up in Minnesota and I have a large extended family. <laughs> so we always like got together for holidays and, um, you know, birthdays and graduations and my aunts um, can cook. Yeah. <laughs> 
And so I incorporate that a lot into Maple Bay, which is super fun. Um, there's a lot of baking and cooking. Uh, and I try to work that into scenes. Every book actually has a recipe. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, at the end of it. And it's um, something either that's like been a recipe um, that I've tweaked over the years. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of my favorite recipes that my family loves are in there and they're always from a scene in the book too. So. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So. Is there going to be a Maple Bay cookbook? Maybe. <laughs> I love it when authors do those. <laughs> I, know. I know. I do. I love it too. I love seeing like a recipe or um, a craft or, or any yeah. like cocktail recipe or anything like that. That's part of a book. It just makes it that much more. Fun. I agree. Yeah, I completely agree. I, if I was a cook or a good cook, I would love to be able to do that in my books, but I'm not. So <laughs> I'm very much a very strict recipe follower. And so I have zero original recipes. <laughs> yeah, I think I feel like those strict, like the um, baking, I like to bake a lot more than I like to cook. Um, I feel like baking you're like a rule follower that's when it works best for you yeah yeah that's my daughter's the uh baker in our family oh I love that I love yeah that. it's yeah. uh it's I like it when she comes home because <laughs> there's always something yummy going on <laughs> I know I know I love that so yeah it's, it's there's uh, lots of cooking um there's a lot of you know small time small town life there's cute bakeries and you know cafes um, okay so maple bay has a like a downtownish area yes and it's set, maple bay is set on maple leaf lake so there are okay. a lot of lakes in minnesota um which is also what i grew up and everybody you know has a place on the lake or a boat right. or go swimming um summertime so I had to have you know gotta have a lake have in it, there yeah I have it set on the lake so the main street actually runs along the edge of uh, Maple Leaf Lake oh cool in my stories um and that's where a lot of scenes happen and then also out in the country um most most all of the heroes and heroines live just outside the town. Um, so it's a lot of farm life uh, and uh, ranch life and being in the barn and yeah, all kinds of fun stuff. Awesome. Awesome. So have you, are you, do you have like an idea for your next? Oh yeah. You told me they, um, what is the name of the next series that you were thinking about? I don't have a name yet. But okay. I, in the last book the book four of maple bay is matched in maple bay and there's a sister um in the book that i am expanding into the next series and it this one is actually going to be a it's a little different for me but it's going to be a grumpy boss rom-com oh okay <laughs> so i am going to use my corporate experience <laughs> um, nice and put it into a grumpy boss rom-com. I just started writing this one, although it's been brewing for a while. And um, it is going to be set in Chicago. Ooh. But I also am going to do my best to make it feel like a small, small town. Yeah. Yeah. Small yeah I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's where I'm going. Um next and then I would like to um expand it into a couple of characters from that, that fun as, as well are you going to do like a neighborhood in um in Chicago or you know that kind of thing to create the yeah. small town yeah I'm gonna do an, um a neighborhood but then the heroine is part of a knitting club oh. um, it's knitting and margaritas so with her girlfriends, so nice. the, two, the two girlfriends, um, I have ideas uh, that I would like to take them into their 
their own love story. And so will all three books be rom-coms then? Just different tropes maybe? Yes. Oh, yes. that'll be fun. Yeah. That'll be fun to write, I bet. Yeah, I think I think so too. And and I would say that even though Mabel Bay, they are not rom-coms, but I I mean I hope they they make people laugh and smile and, and whatnot too. And there's some, yeah, you know, some, got humor in them at the very least. And yeah, for sure. Nice. I like that. Very cool. So you're working on the first one in that series yes. right now. Awesome. And any thoughts on when that will be out? Um, I am not the fastest writer. I wish I, I've tried many things over the years to kind of learn how to speak or teach myself how to speed up my writing but my process at which I have kind of learned over the years even though it frustrates me terribly is um, I am I do take a while to process yeah uh, so sometimes you know if, if I get 500 words out in a couple of hours two three you know maybe two three hours like that's pretty good for me but when yeah. I'm done with my manuscript I'm pretty close to being nice yeah finished pretty clean it, when it's done yeah that's but nice it, it'll take me you know it'll probably be a year before okay. I release it okay nice yeah yeah I know that's I exciting wish I, I have you know friends that write super fast and they just you know? Same. It amazes me when it people does. can push out, you know, somewhere five, six, 12 books a year. It's just I staggering. I know. I can't even like, I can't comprehend. How they well, and they're good that. books too. That's the thing that's like mm -hmm. crazy. They're I not know. just, you know, slapped together. They're just, they're well-developed stories. And right. that's just amazing to me. I know. Yeah. My brain doesn't work like that. Same. <laughs> Same. I'll stand yeah. back and be amazed. And that's as far as it's going to go. <laughs> I know. Me too. I'll keep that's, trying, but that's okay, I tend though. to push myself into like, uh, I get frustrated. I push myself into a bit of a burnout when I try to try to push myself to, too, too. Yeah. Fast. And you have to be careful about that. That's yeah. like for real, especially if you're working yes. another job. Um, full-time like a lot of writers do Absolutely. it's yeah it's a real problem so yeah yeah, yeah it's good to find your own process and it is yeah your yeah. own pace and yeah. and just stick with it yeah yes I agree. that's awesome so do you hang out with readers online anywhere do you like to be on social media at all or yeah I am most active on my Facebook page and um, so on Facebook, it's Brittany, B-R-I-T-T-N-E-Y, Brittany Joy Books. Okay. Um, I, I do have an Instagram account as well. I'm not quite as active there. I am not on TikTok. I appreciate TikTok, but. <laughs> I know I'm um, much better at scrolling than I am on posting. Yeah, so. me too. I'm me afraid. Too. <laughs> you know, I, I can waste a good it. hour on there, man. <laughs> I know. They'll pull you right into it. Yes. Yeah. Cool. For sure. Um, but yeah, Facebook, I'm most, inter um, most active and I have links on my website to brittanyjoybooks.com. Awesome. Um, we will link that in the show notes for you for sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. And do you do a newsletter? I do. And Excellent. that is also on um, my website, the newsletter sign up. I try to do a newsletter twice a month. So bi-weekly. Good. Yeah. Um, I share insider <laughs> stuff about what I'm writing on or what I'm working on. Um, I'll do previews of my job of my book as I get a little bit closer to the release date. And I'm always sharing um, other sweet romance uh, books as yeah. well. So anything I recommend or um, anything that my friends, uh, friends or anybody I, you know, 
appreciate their writing within the community. I will share that as it comes, you know, on promo or launches and stuff too. So I try to, and recipes. I do share a lot of recipes. Awesome. <laughs> Sounds like a very good reason to join your newsletter. So <laughs> yeah. excellent. We will share all of that in the newsletter or in the uh, show notes and um, get people to come over and check you out. That'll be fun. Wonderful. Well, thanks for joining me today. This has been a lot of fun talking with you. Well, thank you for having me. And I look forward to being a part of the um, book club. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for joining me today. If you'd like to be part of the Read Across the U.S. book club, I'd love to have you join us. There is a link in the show notes. So just head down there and click and we will welcome you in. So see you in the book club, I hope. Have a great day and we'll see you next week with a new episode.